All right, everybody, here we are driving at home with the professor. I'm in my office. Doesn't look like it's as nice as Pedro's. He's got his T-shirts up, so make sure you buy a T-shirt from Pedro when, when you're at the Frontline Academy. Uh, I have a friend of mine that I haven't talked to in quite a few years, uh, but really, you know, social media is amazing that I've been able to follow him and see where he's been all over the world um, and that kind of thing. Uh, I just want to uh, let... Pedro introduce himself, let everybody know where he's at right now, kind of what his rank is, what he does, and then I, I got a, a few questions that I want to ask him. So Pedro, let, let everybody know what your deal is. Hello guys, my name is Pedro Lott. I've been uh, in Canada now for two months. I just opened my academy here. I'm a black belt second degree under Eduardo Rios from Brazilian Top Team. I'm Murilo Bustamante, all the guys from the Brazilian top team. I'm a former trainer from Paulo Guilherme Bell, that I have a school in uh, San Clemente now. Good friend of Marco Peraza, the, the creator with the Sharon Bonavix, the Rocinha Project. These guys. Yeah, 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 right. I, well, Many years I, ago. That was more Sharon's deal, but that was, it was a good, definitely, definitely good, good times. Now, um, Pedro, what, Man, the last time I talked to you, I think you were a purple belt. You were living at your mom's house in San Cojado. We just got done training. I was walking around the neighborhood. You were telling me, be careful. It's Rio. Don't trust anybody, blah, blah, blah. And then I hadn't been back to Brazil in a lot of years. Social media is beautiful. I see that you're teaching jiu-jitsu in the United Arab Emirates, you're all over the world, so kind of uh, let everybody know what your story is, like what, you know, from the last time I saw you when you were at Purple Belt, when you started, you know, like, uh, you were a Brazilian top team, man, how did you get from living in your mom's apartment to getting to be one of the head instructors in the United Arab Emirates? Well, uh, first when I was on Brazilian top team, and then I got my brown belt, is about 2000, end of 2006, and uh, on 2007, I had the opportunity to go to Thailand. Uh, someone con contact a Brazilian top team and ask for someone to go there to train Muay Thai. And that that time, I was like uh, looking forward to fight MMA too. So I was like, oh, kind of the MMA dreaming. And I was like, oh, why not move to Thailand for six months and have all this experience training there with the best guys in the Muay Thai? So it's gonna be great. And at the same time, make some a little bit money. It wasn't like the money wasn't the goal. The goal was like the Muay Thai and, and traveling and spread the jiu-jitsu around. So I spent six months there in Chiang Mai, in the north of Thailand, and I I met one Australian guy there that he we really got connected. We got good friends. And after these six months in Thailand, I went to Brazil for a month. Then I flew to Sydney, Australia. And I was teaching his gym called Bulldog Gym. It's a big gym there for Muay Thai. They have like um, basically more Muay Thai than anything else. It was the first branch that you, was to have uh, Jiu Jitsu and MMA. And from there, Professor Carlos Santos the, was the one that was holding the Jiu-Jitsu in, uh, in UAE, in the uh, United Arab Emirates. Oh, Carlão, right? Yeah, Carlão, yeah. He, he's a former black belt from Brazilian top team also. So he called me and said, look, we're looking for 12 teachers. Uh, we're going to start this uh, new project in the schools, in the public schools. For who doesn't know, in Abu Dhabi now, uh, 62 schools are holding as a peak class from grade 5 to grade 12 jiu-jitsu. So they have to train jiu-jitsu. So are. part of the education, so if you're in school in Abu Dhabi, you have to learn jiu-jitsu. Yeah, and if you are, your peak class is jiu-jitsu. You don't have any other peak class. Your peak class is jiu-jitsu. So twice a week, the, every, every kid there have a one hour for jiu-jitsu twice, twice a week. That's a very nice. So when we went there, it was just 12 guys, just 12 schools, and was just to check, like, they, they want to see how it changed the, the, the behavior, the attitude of the kids, like, health-wise, food-wise. Kids there, like, they, they have a big problem with diabetes there, you know, obese kids. 
Okay. The the chic look for change the mentality of the the kids there. Now let me let me ask you: Was this Sheik Tanun that made this happen, or is this a different Sheik? No, it's a he's a older brother, Sheik Mohammed. Okay. Sheik Mo is the the crown prince of Abu Dhabi. He's the the ruler of Abu Dhabi too. Okay. So he he Carlo talked talked to him and brought him this idea. He liked, and then he pushed forward. And and then now they just hiring more and more people. I was lucky that working the first year there, and my school we had like the school tournaments, like national tournament, city tournament. Okay. And my school was the winner in two years in a row for the city tournament and the national tournament. And by life's connections, like uh, my father was very close to the Grace family. Renzo met me there, and he's a good friend of my father. So he he said, "I wanna I wanna change your job now. I'm you're gonna you're gonna work with the prince." So he brought me to work with Sheikh Tahnun. That's the the guy who created the ADCC. Okay. And for the last four years, I was work I was happy and lucky enough to work with him and be around all the best guys in the world of uh, BJJ comp competition wise. So let's go back. So you, somebody, you, your first trip, so it wasn't to the UAE, it was to Thailand, right? I so mean, yeah. you were in Chiang Mai, what, what camp were you working with, you know, and, and how was your time in Thailand? Like what was that like for you? Well, Thailand was a great place. It was a great experience as like, it was the first time that I was moving out from my, my mother's house. Like, for who doesn't know, Brazilians live to, to the last second with the moms. <laughs> same, thing, same thing for us Italians from Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's our part of our Italian blood that does that. <laughs> so, in 2007, I moved to Thailand and... Thailand's an awesome place. So we were in the, I was in the north of Thailand in called Chiang Mai, the city. Okay. It's pretty. There's a lot of historic stuff in Chiang Mai, correct? Yeah. Yes. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's the capital of the north. It's a very strong uh, Buddhist culture there. People there are so friendly, so respectful. It's an amazing place. Very peaceful place. And a great place to train too. Now we have like more and more Jiu Jitsu there. Like, some guys like be looking for MMA. It's a good place to go and train Muay Thai. Awesome people there. You're gonna have like a fun time for your family. It's it's a cheap place to go to, so it's right. a good travel to do. I advise anyone that the, if you wanna go for a different culture, very totally different from anywhere that you're gonna see, it's Thailand. It's a very nice place. So um, you stayed there for six months. Why did you decide to leave? Was it a visa or the opportunity in Australia or what, what was, was my the contract? I have a contract just for six months there, and was I just wanted the experience there. I had the opportunity to fight uh, two professional Muay, Muay Thai fights there. That was awesome. Actually, the day after wasn't awesome, but <laughs> it was a very good experience. I got gotcha. you. So then your your contract expires, you go back home, you stay with mom for a little bit, and then you go to Australia. One month. was uh, just a month, and then went back to Australia. So did you eat a lot of acai when you were home to make sure oh, that you did? Always. <laughs> BB have a, a, a BB Sucs, so who doesn't know BB Sucs, a famous juicy house there in Brazil. And I have a, a reserved spot there. Always when I'm there, I have a chair there ready, waiting for me. <laughs> So now you go to Australia. How much time did you spend in Australia? In Australia was five, five or six months. I was there and I really like Sydney. Beautiful city too. Good people. But uh, Carlon called me with this great opportunity, and I was like, I think to be in the, it's now in the, on the history of Jiu Jitsu. Like we changed Jiu Jitsu. Like Carlon was. A, had a good vision and we changed the sport. We had the world pro there. I have the school programs. Like I, I have to be part of that. I felt that I have to be part of that. All right. So now, now you're in. So we went from Thailand. You went to Australia. Now you're in Abu Dhabi, right? And it's it's kind of sounds like you know this is the first time because I don't even think the Brazilian government ever did anything like this. Is this correct? Is this the first time a National government is getting behind the sport of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu to introduce it to children on a school level. Is that correct? That's totally correct. You very correct. 
we in Abu Dhabi we have uh, the Jiu Jitsu community have the luck of the, the support of the sheikhs and they have the the money and the power to to make things works there and they are very happy in the first year was supposed to double size or so from 12 teachers was supposed to come 12 more and be like 24 teachers they triple size so it was like 60 four black belts there. Now I think it's around 250. Wow. Something like that. So we have a lot of people there. So now when you when you move to Abu Dhabi, right, you, you're teaching at the schools and you have a nice life. Like what was, you know, was there any culture shock for you? Were there any things that you needed to get accustomed to as a Brazilian living in the UAE with a, you know, it's a Muslim country with Muslim culture. So what was that like for you? At the, in, at the first, and actually the first day that when we arrived there, the first shock, incredible talking about a Brazilian was the heat. We arrived there in September and the middle of the summer. So as soon as the door of the, the airport opened, was like a heat uh, strike on, on our face. I was like, oh my God, we're in the middle of the desert. <laughs> but, uh, and was like, as a... As a well, come from Western country, you look at the people with the kandura. It's like the 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 garment from the local people. Okay. See the, the girls with the abaya, uh, with the cover face and all black clothes was kind of like I will say weird, but uh, was very different for what I I'm used to. Like I used to see girls in bikini, you know. <laughs> off on, right on the beach there you cannot walk without your shirt so for me it was a kind of shock in the first time so you get used to everything that's going on there Carlisle has you set up at the um, at the school level you're teaching the, the kids and that seems like it's it's a really fulfilling and, and you know you're really kind of helping the kids and, and pushing the pro the, the government program along is that does that sound about right Yes, yes. Is uh, when we when I first arrived there, other thing that was like very different was because I thought the the schools that it, because we are Brazilian and then we speak English, kind of English, <laughs> like, uh, Renato Laranja English. So, <laughs> I I thought the kids will will speak English too, but when I first arrived there, the kids are like none English, zero English. If I had wow. one kid that could, he could answer his name in English, was a big deal. So we kind of uh, make a, made a dia dialect there with uh, some Arab words, with the English words, with Portuguese words, so it was kind of that to, to see people speaking there and communicating. You're not speaking with more than communicating. So now, were boys and girls allowed to take the um, jiu-jitsu classes? Boys and girls. Girls' school, because they are till the, the, the fifth grade, they are boys and girls together. On the fifth grade, they separate. The, the girls who study in girls' schools and boys in boys' schools. So now, the since the beginning, they had like schools with girls, with the black belt girls there, some brown belts also there, teaching the girls and the boys with the boys competitions and they are separate too. Okay. So, so now they, it's a very open country. It's like when people think about a UAE, they sometimes they, they miss with uh, Saudi Arabia. It's a, it's a very di different countries. A little more progressive is what you're saying? Yes. Way, they are way more Western than we, we think at first time before we go there. They're okay. very open to, to the foreigners there. So now you dis you decide you want to you want to leave the schools right and you um you want to go Henzo uh, was gracious enough to to kind of get you the job working with Sheik Tanun. Yes. And you were run so what was your job? I, I mean, you you were teaching the Sheik or you were teaching at his academy. What was it, what was the deal there? Well, uh, my my job was to to be with him and train with him and his family. I have some of his nephews also that are. That I used to train with, so if they have like a trip for somewhere, I'm always with them and uh, train with them. So you are also, per like a personal jujitsu instructor. Yes, yes, yes. Oh wow! And now, I some of the cool things that I I saw when I was like stalking you on Twitter and looking at your old pictures on on Instagram is, man, I see pictures with you with Cobrinha, 
with Henzo, with Hickson, with you, you name it, and it looks like the Sheik or you or whoever had made the opportunity for these guys to come and train with the Sheik or with you or, or, or whatever. What was that experience like? I, that experience, honestly, was in the last four years, I could have what every Jiu-Jitsu practitioner in the world would dream of. It was like I had one week with Rickson Grace, just me, him, Renzo, Corbrian in the same match, and the Sheik Tarnun. That is like, a, for the guys who doesn't know him, he's a top black belt. He's really good. There's not a, no, no BS about it. And... And I get paid for that. What the hell I can ask for? <laughs> <laughs> you so, know, I had like great times with the uh, Rickson, John Jack Machado, Renzo, thousand times with Renzo. Renzo is like there almost every month. Cobrinha, the Mendes Bros, um, Galvão, any any Rodolfo Vieira, Marcos Buchecha. If I say the names, I would be like not fair because I will forget someone. For I got it. So anybody who's any, let's just look at the list of current world champions in the last three years, and you've probably had some of them come through, or most of them come yep. through the the Sheik's program. That that's amazing. So now, not being in Brazil for all these years, or this, you know, for the amount of time. The one thing you could worry about is, man, how's my jiu-jitsu going to get better? But you didn't have that problem, right? Because you're training all the time, and they're they're bringing in the best guys in the world all the time, right? Not not at all. I had no problem with that. But another thing that, like, I always I used to have a, a, this thinking, and I think it's a good thing to to say to the people that's listening us that watching us is Brazil, it is still the mecca for the jiu-jitsu, and I think for a long time still on. But I think like we, if we look like one of the best competitors in all time for me was Roger Gracie. And if we look back on uh, 2003, he moved to England where he had basically white belts to train with. And he come back as 10 times world champion. So... I think the train is all about how you train yourself, how you do with yourself. It's you be with champions for sure. You're gonna push you harder, but it's how you set up your mind for for the game. I see people training with uh, Margarita, an example, and never succeed, never won any tournament. And I saw people train with the in the middle of nowhere in Rio, just. Uh, Couple of friends, like one black belt and the rest of blue belts and white belts, and these guys are doing amazing. So at the at the end of the day, it's it's the person, right? It's what you do with the training that you're you're given, right? Yeah. I, yeah. It's helpful being around world champions, but just being next to them isn't automatically going to rub off on you. For sure. Give you the thing about being close to the champions, give you that uh, confidence. Confidence that like sometimes you need in the competition. You like you go there and you're like, oh my god, I train with this, I train with the Ricks on the whole time. Nothing can be worse than that. That gives you sometimes this gives you a good mindset for the competition. But uh, I think everything's on your head. If you put a good mindset, you you go through many things. You go through anything in your life. So let just, me. So sorry. Let me let me ask you from a standpoint of you know. I've been to Brazil. I know what the what the social scene is like. Now, what was that like for you, leaving Brazil, leaving your you know your family, kind of moving to the, you know Abu Dhabi? You know, what was that social scene like for you, or was there one? Uh, honestly, like when I first moved to Abu Dhabi, it was kind of I would say easy because uh, with me came like from the twelve professors that came there four or five were like very close friend of mine so I was feeling at home like we we were enjoying everything together we had like tough times sometimes like missing family like a homesick sometimes but we 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 were close enough to support each other and even like we were like a very small community there now it's a bigger community like now it's like a little Brazil there in Abu Dhabi you know everybody knows it Everyone, it's like 250 people, let's say 500 Brazilians there because, like, you put family and like number of this double at least. So, I I think, like, before when we went there was a little bit tough, but 
not enough it was like something that was fine for me at least that like I have friends there one of my best friends was living door to door to me so, that's it, was, great. so it was you I mean obviously you're going to be homesick you want to see your family and that, that kind and of you, stuff so and I'm you, assuming just like any other job you got time off you got to go home to Brazil and see your mom and your sister yeah. and your dad and all that stuff at least once a year you could uh, you could see them so now you're you're in Canada now, right? You've taken the next step. What's you know, like let everybody know. Okay, you know what? You were because when I met you, I thought you were going to go to college and you were going to get a regular job, maybe be a lawyer or something like this. But you know, like what what's going on now? You're in Canada. Like what what's up with uh, your life now after Abu Dhabi? Well, when I when I was in Abu Dhabi, I met my wife. She's a Canadian and. And then I was like four years working there with the Sheik, and I, I was able to save some money to start my business. It was always my dream was to have my academy. One of the guys that lighted up this on me was uh, Jerry Dewiner, our friend. He first time that I saw his the picture of his gym in uh, in Jersey, I I said to to one of my friends, a uh, baby that you know well yeah, from yeah. from Hossi, and said, man, one day I will have a gym like that with the uh, all glass window and and that time is there. People are gonna could walk and see the the training. So this was always stuck in my mind. And uh, Sheikh Tahnu is a wise man. He always opened my mind and said, "Business is a good thing to have, and it's hard to have, but it's a good thing." So then, when it came the opportunity, I talked to him. I moved here to to Canada in last May. And I just started the gym on uh, on September. It's uh, called Frontline because my my professor Eduardo Hughes is he's based in Norway. After he he left uh, Brazilian top team, he opened his academy in, in Norway called Frontline. So I open a, a branch of Frontline here in uh, in Canada. And my goal now is living the real Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu lifestyle that we all love. That's training. Teaching, be around people, make good friends here, make a family environment. That's that's my goal. So now let me ask you: You've gone from kind of you know you were a teacher in a school, you were a personal jujitsu coach. You know how did that prepare you to own your own business? You know now you have to sell, you have to market, you have to teach, you have to mop the mats. You know that that's a that's a big change from from what you were doing before. So, kind of, what was that like, and what kind of lessons did you learn from the sheik that kind of helped you um, become a better businessman and be confident in opening your business? One of the things that like he didn't taught me, but he provided for me was all the know-how from Renzo, Fabio Gurgiel, all these guys in the last two years that went there to visit. I'm saying sorry for them now, but I annoy them with the questions and how should do this and how it works and what the, what's the main failures and what the big winnings, connections like uh, contacts of uh, clothes, contacts of uh, geese and what's the good space to start with. Like sometimes I see so many people start with a huge gym with a nice octagon there and then one year later, they close indoors, they bankrupt. So I didn't want to start like that, and I start to learn. Cobrinha also was one of the ones that most helped me with that. So I got uh, like tips and advice from everywhere, from everyone, and then I'm trying to apply in my job. And so far, we're doing good. So. So now, when your students come through the door and they go, "Hey, you know, why should I train here? Why would somebody?" Why? Why should I want to be your student? You know, I know why I should want to be. You know, because I know I know who you are. I've trained with you. I know the lineage you come from. But somebody coming in off the street, hey, who who are you? What's what's jujitsu like? You know, why should they train in front line? First, first of all, like for me, what I say is, here we we are a really kind of old school Brazilian jujitsu. We don't sell belts here. If you're looking, first thing that I say, if you're looking for a belt. You're coming for the wrong place right away. Like if you wanna be a black belt in two years, three years, you're looking for the totally wrong place. Have many other schools that will give that, not here. 
the second thing is we are family environment. Like we we don't wanna we want to be tough on the mats. Outside we all gentlemen. We are all friendly, all smiling. But when as soon as we put the kimono, shake hands, everybody's tough. We're gonna have hard training here. So that's what uh, bring people here. People come here and see it's the real thing. It's like real jujitsu. So you really learn a self defense. You learn how to pass a guard, you know, when you're more advanced, for sure, if you have a question of a bearing bull or 50-50, any of these new things, we, we are able to teach too. But for me, jiu-jitsu is sweep, mount, or take down, mount, pass the guard, mount, and Carl, Old school Carlson style. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That's, that's the old school style for me. Is the is the submission style. It's not the advantage style. Me, me too. You know, and and you, you know, you've been lucky enough to train with you know the, the people who count in this sport. Um, Pedro, this has been awesome, man. I know you have a class to teach. I just got done teaching one of my classes, but man, this is amazing. You know, we met over ten years ago. You were how old are you now? I'm 33. You were, so you were 23. You were a young kid, maybe even younger, running around Rio, showing me around. So, man, this is a, a congratulations. I'm happy for you, for your family. Now, if, when when I'm in Calgary, it's your 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 academy's in Calgary, correct? No, it's uh, in uh, Sherwood Park. Sherwood it's Park. Alberta. Yeah, it's in Alberta, but it's Sherwood Park. The, the okay, city. so Sherwood Park. So, give us the web address, phone number, and anybody you'd like to thank. You know, uh, shout out, sponsors, that kind of thing. Guys, uh, our website is frontlinebjj.com, and our phone number is 780-868-4495. You're going to contact direct to me. My name is Pedro. I would like to say thank for you, Marco. You're an awesome guy. Like I always enjoy being around you. As you said, like in Brazil, we had great times. I hope soon we can have a... A holiday all together. You bring yeah, the kids down there. We'll be come, awesome. to come to Canada and have some fun. Yeah. Also here, anytime the house, the the house is always open for you and for any for one of your students. If you have a fight here or something here, thank you. I I appreciate it. It's always open for you guys. You know that you have a base here. So anybody that wants to learn real Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu from a Brazilian who's trained with the best, by the best, under the best, check out Frontline Academy, Sherwood Park. Pedro, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. Good luck with everything, okay? Thanks very much, Marco. Have a good class. Have a great day, man. Right. Take care, man. Bye-bye. Take care.